Probably the most powerful tool in AutoCAD MEP are the layer key styles. I've never been in two different engineering firms that use layers the exact same way. And to this day, users still argue about layer names, colors, and line weights. The layer key style was born out of the need to provide a user with the ability to control the layer that an object is placed on, but not have the layer or its settings hard-coded into the program. Instead, the program uses a database of layer names that are associated with an alias key. The key is what the program uses to set the layer, so the user simply has to edit the alias to the settings they want. From the Style Manager, open the multi-purpose objects. Select Layer Key Styles. There is one layer key style database that comes with AutoCAD MEP in this template, and it is based on the AIA standard. To edit the layer key style, select in the left browser, then go to the Keys tab in the right pane. By default, the layer keys are sorted alphabetically, and there are many of them, over 1,400 to be exact. Scroll to the electrical key area, which begins with an E dash. For most keys, the first letter of the key sets the discipline. All electrical items in this case would begin with E dash. The second part of the layer key sets how it is used. If the abbreviation is MV, then the key is typically associated with multi-view parts. If the abbreviation is SY, then it's associated with the system definition. This is common throughout all of the keys, but there are some legacy keys, such as CEILOBJ or ANNOBJ, that remain in the database. The remainder of the key describes the part the key is associated with. The description helps the user understand how the key is intended to be used. Next up, the layer name. Select the icon next to the name. This opens up the layer name dialog which follows the AIA standard. One required character for the discipline an option letter for status, such as X for existing or D for demolition. The required major section, which is the primary part description, and requires four letters or numbers. Two minor sections that can be up to four characters or numbers long to describe the part in greater detail. and the option to place status at the end of the name instead of the second optional character at the start of the name. Select OK to close this dialog. Take a look at a lighting device, and you can get an idea how the standard works. You don't have to select the layer name from the dialog, but can simply type it in at the layer cell. From here, all you need to do is assign the color, line type, and line weight, as well as the plot style if you're using an STB-based template, and overrides. To add a key, select the Add button. Create the layer key first, and then assign the values as needed. To look at how a layer key is used, go back to an HVAC system definition in the Style Manager. On the Design Rules tab, note the key. The layer key identifies the layer that all objects on the system will be placed on. The layer key style defines this list. The layer key is basically a pointer that tells the system where to look in the active key in order to find what the layer is to be used. The layer overrides allow me to create additional layers or changes to the layer name based on the overrides in the layer key. If I select the override layer box for that item, such as a minor item, 
and then locate the override I want, the layer name will change for objects created beyond this point. Each field represents a different portion of the layer name and is controlled individually in the overrides. Once the layer key is set, then I can edit and create system definitions and part styles as needed. The master drawing system definitions.dwg, which is located in the styles folder, contains all of the defined system definitions and layer keys that are associated with this database. So try importing the styles from that drawing before venturing out and creating your own layer keys and systems. The active layer key is set in drawing setup. So check this when you want to start to edit your own template. And then edit the relevant layer keys and properties as needed to match your standard. And I've got a little bonus for you. I've added two customized layer key styles for doing as-built work and with different modifiers, along with removing all the STD abbreviations in the layer names. So, enjoy.